Hi, my name is John Helfen. I am an Education Solutions Specialist with Autodesk, and today I wanted to provide an overview of the part modeling environment in Autodesk Inventor 2011. The plan for this demonstration is to roughly follow the first part modeling tutorial that comes with Autodesk Inventor and provide extra tips and tricks along the way that may not be included in the tutorial. So on your screen you see the final part or final version of the part we're going to create uh, during this demonstration. But I'm going to start from scratch so you can see the entire process of modeling this part. I will create a standard metric part to begin and we'll do some basic setup. I want to set the orientation the way I prefer it for my my liking. So I'm going to set a couple things here. So to get started in the browser you'll find that we have the origin folder uh, and in that folder we have a set of default work features that are set to be invisible when you start the part. These work planes are used as the basis for your part modeling. Um, I'm going to begin by selecting the XZ plane and use the heads-up display in Inventor to create a sketch on that plane. Um, I only turned these on just so you could see them for reference. Uh, I'm not actually going to use them so I'm going to turn them back off. But I will look at that sketch we just created and begin sketching our part. I'm going to start out with a rectangle and I'm going to show you how you can use the heads-up display to create variables on the fly. You can use your tab key in 2011 to switch between the dimensions in the heads-up display to enter values that will become parametric dimensions on the sketch. In this case, I'm actually going to type width equals 49. And what this will do is actually create a variable called width and set it to be 49 for this dimension. And when I hit enter, you'll see the dimension is created at 49. And I'm going to create the second dimension to show you that the variable was created. When we create this dimension here, I've got my system set up so that when I create a dimension, it automatically launches the Edit Dimension dialog. By default, this is not set. You can set it in the application options. But when it launches this dialog, all the, uh, the value of that dimension is selected. And if I hover over this dimension that I just created and click on it, you'll see that the value for this dimension we're creating right now is set to width. So what I've done is actually built a relationship between those two dimensions so that if I were to change this dimension to say, uh, let's go 30 and hit enter, the other dimension updates as well. So these are linked. So I'm going to set this back to 49. Now, the other thing you'll notice is this dimension has an FX in front of it, indicating that it is being driven by another dimension or a formula. And these values, when you're creating them, are actually stored in our parameters dialog box. That can be found on the Manage tab, and you can click Parameters, and you'll see a list of all the dimensions that are created in this part, along with all the variables that are created. Here you can see width is created, and it's set to 49. Its value is 49. And D1, which is the second dimension that we created, is set to width. I can control the dimension from this dialog box. So I could, for example, if I wanted to be half as half the size of the width, I could just say set it to divided by 2. And when I hit my tab key, you'll see in the background, this 49 has been divided by 2 to give us 24.5. So the formula is actually driving the dimension on this sketch. I'm going to close this dialog and give and show you one option for changing the style for these dimensions. Right now, um, I'm seeing the value and I'm seeing that this is driven by a formula, but I don't see the names and I don't see what that formula is. If you right click in the graphics window, there's an option for disp uh, dimension display. And if you select expression, you'll see that the dimensions are updated with more information. Here you can see that this is this dimension is set to width and its value is 49 and this dimension is being is D1 and it's being driven by the formula width divided by 2. I can edit this dimension and see that uh, formula as well and in this case we are going to undo the change that we made in the di di dialog box just to show you that there's a bi-directional control 
of those variables. So with that, we are ready to create our first feature. So I'm going to click on the Model tab and click Extrude. And we'll use our heads-up display to roll this out to 20 millimeters. And go ahead and create our first part feature. Next, we need to create the hole pattern uh, that was around the outer edge of this part. And to do that, I'm going to create a new sketch on that front face and use the offset option in this sketch to offset the outer edge in order to control where our holes will be located. And we'll go ahead and set dimension this offset to be 5 millimeters. And oh, before we quit stop the dimension command. I'm actually going to add a couple new dimensions. Right now this, this sketch you can see it's all blue instead of green, meaning it's fully constrained. You can also see that down in the status bar in Inventor. But knowing that it's fully constrained, I'm going to add a dimension here that I know is going to warn me that it's a driven dimension. A driven dimension means that the, or that the sketch is fully constrained, but you could still add a dimension so that you can see its value. And driven dimensions are always shown with parentheses around them. Now the reason I do this is I'm actually going to use this sketch to drive the dimensions for the next component we're creating. And that is the hole and the hole pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this sketch and create a and create a hole. Right now it defaults to from sketch and that turns the center's options on. So in this sketch I can select any of the endpoints. Uh, to use as centers for holes. And I'm going to select this bottom left corner. I'm going to set our termination to be through all. I want this to go through the entire part and set its dimension to 6 millimeters. And I'm going to hit OK. So I've created my first hole and when I did that it consumed this sketch uh, when we created the hole. I still want to leverage this sketch to create my next feature. So I'm going to right click on it and select visibility to make that turn that on so that we can leverage it during the creation of our hole pattern. Next we're going to create a rectangular hole pattern using the hole we just created. I'm going to launch the rectangular pattern command and by default the first thing that comes up is the ability to select the features you want to pattern. So I'll select the hole we just created. Next I'll select the direction we want to pattern the hole in. And in this case I'm going to set I could the dimension to, I'm going to highlight the value for the dimension and select the D5 variable that we created earlier, or the dimension we created earlier. Next I'm going to select this vertical edge, and you can see it's going in the wrong direction. I'm going to flip that and it'll move in the opposite direction. I will select its value and link it to this D6, let me move the dialog a little bit, you, this D6 variable or dimension we created in the last sketch. So now you can see we've selected these values to control where these holes are located. I'll go ahead and create that and you can see that the holes are located right there on the corners um, of the previous sketch. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of that sketch now because we're finished with it. And the next feature we need to create is the revolved feature that, uh, or the boss that was sitting on the edge of, or in the center of this part. There's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to show you at least two ways, just to show uh, some variation from what the, the tutorial normally shows. What we need to do is sketch right down the middle of this part. So if I click the Create 2D Sketch option, I can select this face and drag, click and drag, which would allow what this is doing is creating a work feature on the fly that would allow me to sketch right in the middle of the part. When I release this, it's creating the work feature, and right now it's going in a ne negative direction, so I'm going to leave the negative. I'm going to select the dimension, leave the negative, and s using the flyout menu, select show, well, let me move this dialog, I'm coming off the screen here in the, the recording, so I'm going to say show dimension, and when I do that, I can select features in the part, and when I do select the base part, it shows the dimensions and variables that are controlling that original base feature. So I could select this 24 